why I brought out the water smacker was because, and I had, by the way, had developed that technology prior to most of this other stuff. You know, because it puts, imparts energy to the water. It charges the water molecules. It allows the water to be absorbed by the cells of the human body. If you drink water and it's not in the proper state, the water that's not in the proper state just goes to adding to your interstitial fluid. It does not go into your cells and cleanse your cells out. More and more, there's so much EMF pollution out there that water is losing its charge, the natural charge it gets when it's in the Earth's water cycle. And with the advent of 4G, LTE, and a lot of the Wi-Fi stuff, there's towers going up that are transmitting 2450, 2100 to 2300 PCS. These frequencies knock the energy out of the water, knock the electrons out of the water. When water becomes positively charged, it becomes acidic, which means more incidence of cancer. So if you want to do your body good, you want to drink water that is, is really negatively charged. So that's why I thought it was time to come out with this technology. But the, uh, that's only one of the things. Now we'll go on to John, you want to come up? You probably remember John's presentation with the Ormus. This is the Ormus. We on? This is the Ormus that we precipitated out. It has settled, and this is the clear liquor that you're going to pour off and decant. It's already been done twice, and. With a laser, remember we talked about coherent energy. Coherent energy, um, laser energy is coherent energy and it can identify, it's one of the ways you can identify uh, Ormi's materials. Is this cap off? And put your hand. Okay. And Bob's going to put his hand there. But as we shine it through, there'll be a beam and it may be hard uh, to get close enough, but in the beam there's a lot of little sparkles that are visible. And that's it. what happens is the laser beam being coherent energizes and uh, drives it from the Ormi state and it starts to precipitate out into its parent metal or, or configuration. This is the normal state. And in the normal state. Yeah. And uh, if it'll settle back in because the rest of the uh, material is calling it and saying, hey, you don't belong out there. You, you're one of us, and come on back, so it'll eventually settle out. And this is even a more narrow beam, and it's more difficult to see. But um, if we get it down, sometimes we'll get some reflection. Um, Let me explain it. You'll get sparkles that occur because when the Ormus is in this state, it has a Meissner field which blocks gravity field energy and EMF. The laser is coherent. The laser can penetrate the Meissner field. It can impart energy into the Ormus which causes that Meissner field to collapse and it emits photons which are visible. So you see sparkles as the Ormus reverts back to normal state but it won't stay normal state because it's absorbing energy and it's going to go back to its high spin state and become invisible again. Yeah, and remember we talked about the Meissner field does not like electromagnetic energy. So if you shine visible light in there, it's just going to move out of the way and say, I'm not playing your game. So it doesn't give the, the result. And that's why this can be used to identify it. One of the properties that this has, since it is non-electromagnetic, is that it can apply the energy to the water. Besides charging up the water, it can also excite the Ormus to the point of collapse. While it absorbs that energy, it becomes normal state, metallic, crystalline, gold, platinum, whatever, iridium, whatever the metals, the Ormus metals are. And there it will precipitate out and you can collect it in. This is after five hours of being energized from water that contains Ormus. 
you can see the, the gold colored sediment in the bottom. And because there's a huge bowl, not a huge bolus of Ormies in there, it's not going to tempt it to come back as, as much. Yeah, it's been, it's been changed to metallic state. Once it's changed to metallic state, it does not go back to the Ormus state. Yeah. And remember, we talked about saturation, how many uh, electrons are in the Cooper state. And so if you draw it partially out, it can go back. But if you fully precipitate it out and all the Cooper pairs are broken, it's a metal and it's, it's going to behave like one. That's as much as I can say. <laughs> okay. And then the other thing we noticed is, is after a while that will stop happening with the lasers, but if you agitate it again, it'll reconfigure the process, and that's food for thought. I haven't figured that out yet. 